Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Welcome to the Blue Cube YouTube channel. In this video, as part of our Adobe Animate tutorial series, we'll be diving into symbols. Understanding symbols is crucial if we want to work on different animation states. Alright friends, to understand what symbols are, I should explain that they are graphic objects or animations that we can save and reuse in different scenes. Once a symbol is created, you don't need to recreate that graphic or animation in various scenes over and over again. By creating it once, you can use it as a symbol in different scenes. We typically use two types of symbols, although there is a third type that I will explain later. First, I'll create a new layer. I'll select the rectangle tool and choose the red color. Then, I'll draw a rectangle or square. Next, I'll create a new layer. Right click on the shapes, select the circle tool, and draw a circle. I'll select the circle and assign it a blue color. Placing it in front of the movie clip option. I'll then choose the graphic mode and right click on the shape. Selecting the convert to symbol option, which has the F8 shortcut. Essentially, I want to convert my shape into a symbol. When I click on it, the Convert to Symbol window opens. Here, you can choose a name for your symbol. You can name it anything you like. In the Type section, you can select the type of symbol you want. Movie clip, button, or graphic. I mentioned that we mainly use movie clips or graphics. You should know that the button option is used for creating graphic buttons, where you can assign JavaScript codes to control them. We won't be diving into coding just yet, so we'll stick to using movie clips and graphics for now. I'll select the graphic option for this example, which we'll explore together. There is also an option to set the anchor point of your symbol. For example, if you choose the center, the point will turn black, placing the symbol's registration point in the center. If you choose the corner, the point will be located there. For now, I'll choose the center. In the folder section, you can select or create a folder for the symbol, as each symbol you create is added to the library. You can create or select a folder if you've made different ones before. I'll select the default option and click OK. Now, my shape has been converted into a symbol. If you go to the library, you'll see the symbol we created named Symbol1. You can save it and use it in different projects. By holding down the left click and dragging it, you can create multiple copies of the shape easily. This feature is helpful if you've designed a complex pattern and want to duplicate it effortlessly. Now I'll press Ctrl plus Z to undo my actions. In the lower section, you can delete the symbol, create a new folder and place the symbol inside, or remove the symbol from the folder. I'll select and delete the folder. You can also create a new symbol using the icon here. For now, I'll close this because we're not working with the library, but instead, exploring the different types of symbols and their uses. Now, if I double-click on this square, you'll see that Symbol1 is created at the top. Let me click again to return to Symbol1. Notice that in this timeline, we have created three layers. One for the text I wrote, one for the square, and one for the circle. But if I double-click on the symbol, you'll see that this is our scene 1. If I double-click on the square, symbol 1 is created, and a new, dedicated timeline for my shape in graphic mode is generated. This also happens in movie clip mode, but there are differences. So, when you double-click on your symbol, you essentially enter a separate room where you can create an animation for your shape independently. Any changes you make will also be reflected in Scene 1 or the main timeline. Let me demonstrate this. I double-click again, go to frame 30, click here, and select Insert Keyframe to create a keyframe automatically, and the frames will be generated automatically as well. Now, in this keyframe, I select my shape or symbol, hold the Shift key, and move it forward. Then, I right-click on the frames in the timeline and select Create Shape Tween. As you can see, the shape moves in its own timeline. 
Notice that you can't see the other layers in symbol 1 here, so pay attention to that. We've now created this animation here. I'll go back to my scene. The layers are still here, but notice that there is no animation yet. The animation only exists within the symbol if you double-click it. Now I'll double-click on the scene again to return. I'll go to frame 30 and select Insert Frame, or I can press F5 instead. It doesn't matter as long as we create the frames, and this will create the animation for us. Since the other layers only have one frame, they won't be displayed. I'll go to frame 30 and select layer 1, which contains my text. I'll click here and create a keyframe so that my text is displayed across all frames. Now, I'll click on the circle layer, right-click on the circle, select Convert to Symbol, and the symbol window will open. This time, I'll choose Movie Clip and click OK. If I double-click on the circle, we enter Symbol 2. We've now entered the timeline specifically for this circle in movie clip mode. If I go back to the scene and click on the circle, you'll see it says movie clip in the object panel. If I open it, I can change its mode. I'll double click on it again, go to frame 30, and select add keyframe. Now I'll move the shape forward like this. I'll right click on the frames and select create shape tween. As you can see, the circle is now moving in its own dedicated panel. Now let's return to our main scene. I'll click here to go back to the main scene. If I move the slider forward, you'll see that only the square moves forward. If I press Ctrl plus Enter, you'll notice that in test mode, only the square moves. I'll close this window. Remember, if you want to test your animation, you can press Ctrl plus Enter or go to the Control menu and select the test option. However, to make the circle move, I'll go to frame 30 and simply create a frame. I'll click on Insert Frame, but you'll notice that the circle still doesn't move. But if I now press Ctrl plus Enter, you'll see that the circle starts moving as well. So, the difference between these two modes is that in the main timeline, the movie clip doesn't display its movement. It only shows the movement when you test or render the final output. This helps reduce the load on your system. Besides these, there are other differences between the two modes as well. In fact, the movie clip mode is a more advanced animation setting that offers a wider range of options. If I click here, you'll see that there are a lot of settings available, such as using different filters. However, in graphic mode, there are fewer settings and you can't add filters to your animation. But in graphic mode, there is a loop option which, as we mentioned earlier, makes the animation repeat. If I press play here, the animation will play once. But if I select the shape, enable the loop option, and move it forward a bit, I can press play, and as you can see, the animation keeps repeating. If I select the shape again, I can choose the reverse loop option, and the movement of the shape will continue in reverse. There are more settings that we'll cover in future tutorials, but as we said, the movie clip mode offers more extensive and professional options, which will work with a lot in upcoming projects. So, these were all the key points you needed to know about symbols so that we can continue with different animation modes in future lessons. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to practice all the steps multiple times to get fully familiar with the various options. Until the next video, goodbye for now.